because of uh, really <coughs> a lot of people, but one person. So the guide to this uh, work over the last uh, 20 plus years uh, has been our friend and colleague and mentor and inspiration and sometimes a uh, drinking buddy, uh, David Kennedy. And I can't start a reflection on our time together without just acknowledging him and asking for us to just tell him how much he's meant to all of us in our work. David, thank you so much. So I've used phrases like uh, minor genius, like brilliant, like uh, voice of, uh, of our future, and I mean all of those. But those uh, attributes need amplification and need grounding and need uh, the uh, support of uh, people who have uh, been our fellow travelers in this work. And we have a number of foundations uh, and government agencies listed in a program somewhere that are many of them who have made this possible. And we should acknowledge our gratitude to them, and particularly MacArthur and uh, Pritzker for this particular conference. Uh, the COPS office and uh, MacArthur again for getting us started. Um, but the real benefit, the real uh, strength, the, the energy that has come to the work that we're talking about here has come from, uh, from you and those like you who are not here. So the feeling I have in the air today as we end our time together is uh, just a lot of gratitude for the work that you've done uh, a sense of, uh, of history that I want to refer, return to in a second, uh, but also this deep sense of obligation. Uh, and it's the obligation to uh, continue uh, to do the work that, that we've started, an obligation to communities where uh, our community leaders, our law enforcement professionals, our elected officials and others are committed because of their oath of office or because of the profession that they subscribe to, committed to doing uh, good work uh, but there's a higher level of commitment, I think, that all of us have as Americans, which is to really help our country through a, uh, a difficult time. So the presence of history starts on many levels. One is, one is the national network. We've uh, been, I've heard, was it five years or six years? Or... So the, you may have heard the story. If you have, just listen one more time. So the, the National Network was created at a conference that David and I convened here in a, a January of some year, five and a half years ago, six years ago. Uh, and many of you were here. I see uh, Tenny who was here. There are others who were here, a dozen of us, 15 of us. And we uh, gathered in a room at the BMW building across the street. And we invited uh, friends. It was, it was literally those people who had been with uh, David for a number of years to help answer the question, is there something here that we should build up? And, that, and what would be a structure for, for building it to make it more sustainable and to help take these concepts and bring them to the point where they were the way we do business. They weren't just a pilot project. They weren't something that was sort of sexy on the side. There wasn't the, the latest shining object, object. It was really the way we did the work. And that um, conference, hard to call it a conference, it was really just a meeting of friends, and uh, Briscoe was there. Uh, on its second day, I was facilitating it. I remember that I had lost control of the room because every head that was, you know, eyes, pairs of eyes was looking at me, went in a different direction all of a sudden. And the direction they all went in was out the window to the Hudson River. Why? Because Sully, was bringing his plane down to the Hudson River. And it was a scary sight. There's this huge, however big a plane that was, uh, going down on our river. So imagine the room. There's all sorts of police chiefs there, right? They're immediately on their Blackberry checking their command centers to figure out what's going on. We went down to another room to get onto CNN to watch the live coverage. And a miracle happened, which is that Everybody got off that plane safely. Uh, Sullenberger had performed a aviation miracle. And we felt sort of inspired by that to go back to our work. But it was this, just like this omen from fill in the blank, however you think about higher beings or the, the universe, that there was something important 
going on at that uh, time when we were having our discussion. So the history that first strikes me is the history of the creation of the national network. Whoa, has the national network, how many staff do you have, first of all? Look at all these blue badges over there. <laughs> and they're not all here. So, so there's one, one measure of maturation, which is uh, that there are all these people working for David now. It used to be just David. Uh, but the more important observation is the national network has evolved to this point where we really understand what the common purpose is. That started six years ago. We made a commitment. It was a band of brothers and sisters, and we were going to try to launch this thing off a launch pad that hadn't really been built yet, but we thought it would go somewhere. And this is where we've uh, landed now six years later, as uh, miraculous in some ways as what happened on the Hudson River. So the National Wet Network, the idea that in his opening remarks, David recognized the people doing the DV work, the people doing the prison work, the people doing the work uh, on, uh, uh, in other countries below the border. Uh, Meg Reese was there recognizing her work in London. I mean, the idea that this is where the National Network has gone in that period of time is, uh, is an important uh, starting point. But the history is bigger than that. The history is bigger than us. The history is bigger than our own sort of claim of uh, some success here. Uh, the history is a longer history of David's work, which we uh, acknowledge. Talked about his first meeting with uh, Commissioner Bill Bratton when he was the commissioner in Boston. Uh, so it goes back at least that long. There's a longer history uh, between the two of us, but I want us just to focus now about a bigger history. And just think how, how ever present the hand of history has been over the past two days and the reminiscence or the, the reminders uh, that we are at an important historical moment. So we have talked about this positioning, our time together over the last two days in the history of policing in America. Commissioner Bratton referenced the Kerner Commission. We talked about, here we are celebrating our 50th anniversary of John Jay. We were founded in that era when the city was really worried about urban riots, about race and police. You know, it sounds familiar, two young men too many young men being killed by cops. And the, uh, the notion that, uh, that we needed to elevate the work of law enforcement professionals. So we stand in the presence of that history as well. And I think a number of people have said, and I would say that there's the same sense of urgency right now as was present then. But we also stand in the history of the changes in the policing profession and the changes in, in the sophistication of law enforcement. Braddon talks about the, the way in which we understand crime better, the understand the role of the police better. We understand what works better. We understand hotspots. We understand what Comstat has helped us so much. We understand what we can do, how to do it well. And now is the time for that history to be honored and for us to just sort of recognize how far uh, we've come in terms of law enforcement. But we also stand in the presence of another history, and this is the history of the country. And that's the history of deeply troubled relationships between the American idea and the realities of slavery. So that history has been very present in our discussions today. Uh, in my opening remarks, I, I referenced the service that we saw uh, Sunday morning in, in uh, uh, Emmanuel M.E. Church in, in Charleston. And I referenced to those historians in the room that that was Denmark Vesey's church, the, the man who led the unsuccessful slave revolt in that city. And uh, so we've had this history of a troubled relationship between those of us and our ancestors who arrived here through some immigrant story and those of us and our ancestors who arrived here through some slavery story or otherwise came here as people of African descent. So that history is, that's the unfinished business so these histories are coming together in this room. And when I sat and listened to the, to the, uh, the panel with uh, Tom Tyler and, and Tracy Cassie and David and, uh, and others talking about our reconciliation work, I'm to think that we have willingly, joyfully embraced that challenge at this time to do something about that history I just have to commend everybody here for saying, we're going to step up to that plate and we're going to take whatever comes our way and try to figure out what to do. So now that I'm learning how to use Twitter, I actually tweeted something that David said. 
you retweeted it, maybe someone on your behalf, but, <laughs> which, is, which is that we're developing the literature of race, reconciliation, and policing. That literature doesn't exist. We don't know what that's going to look like. But we have taken on that history at the same time that we're proud of our history of policing, we're proud of, proud of the history of, of uh, bringing crime rates down. So we're right in the middle of these, these uh, cross currents of the American experience. And there are a lot of people watching us, not to make the pressure too high. Uh, there are a lot of people in the Justice Department who have invested in us just to make the pressure a little bit higher. Uh, but what is so just exciting about being with all of you is the extent to which this is not a complicated, it's complicated, this is not a difficult conversation to be engaged in. You know, I'm tired of conversations about race because they never go anywhere. This is where that conversation is gonna be productive because it is on the ground, it's with real people, it's with real communities, real, with real police departments. And however it opens up, and we have some models that we're working on, for us to be asked by our Justice Department, following the observations by our president after the Trayvon Martin case and our Attorney General after the Trayvon Martin case, to be asked by the Justice Department to take that on as our gift to the to the larger discussion, sort of our contribution to a larger uh, discussion on uh, race and policing and uh, troubled relationships and how to get it right and how to get it better. That's important. That's really impressive. So through all of this sort of fog of history, we have some just beams of light that are really encouraging and, um, and make, make, should give us confidence that we can do the work that has to be done. One is the beam of light of good research. You know, there was Tom Tyler saying, we know how to do this right. Whoever was the guy from Chicago stand, stood up and said, we're doing PJ1, PJ2, and PJ3. We know how to do this. There's Phil Goff saying, we know how the brain works. We know what implicit bias is. We know how to do something about it. So we go into this with a lot of confidence. That beam of light of good science, good research, the work on deterrence, the, the research base on, on the focused deterrence, that it works well. That should give us uh, a lot of uh, confidence. We also have the beam of light of uh, values. So I heard a lot of discussion over the past couple days about, about justice, fairness, uh, equity, words that we use pretty uh, easily these days, which, are, which is very important. We need to hold on to them. Uh, it's not all about uh, evidence. It's also about what's right and what's uh, consistent with our national values. The other beam of light that comes through the, uh, the, the complex fog of, of, uh, of history at the moment is uh, just your passion to, to do things and do things well because you care, because you care about your professions, you care about your communities, you care about uh, your own personal values, which uh, means a lot. And the final one I just want to put on the table is something that has been on my mind. You may know I was, I was in Europe last week looking at German prisons, so I come back trying to figure out sort of what's, what's, what's next to do here in the era of mass incarceration, and just this strong sense of, of patriotism. And I just want to be very clear about that, that we have an obligation, I think, to our country to step up at this time to do what we can do to make our contribution. Uh, reducing mass incarceration is something I'm working on with lots of wonderful people. Uh, the work that you're doing on policing and crime and violence and making communities safer is another contribution. And I think if we sort of talk about it in that way as something that we're doing for the larger American experiment in uh, uh, democracy and uh, in tolerance and equal protection of laws and, uh, and human dignity, and uh, just say uh, we're doing this because we want to get it right, uh, because the, I think in many ways the future uh, depends on our success. So I just want to tip my hat to all of you and to say that I really appreciate what you do and uh, just am so impressed by your commitment to the cause and uh, know that this is not the last time we'll see each other. And in fact, we have lots of work to do, lots of work ahead, uh, but uh, just thank you for everything that you do. Thanks so much.
glad Jeremy has the bandwidth to think lofty thoughts still, because <laughs> uh, I'm stunned. <laughs> Jeremy asked me as we were coming in here, how are you feeling? And I said, I'm stunned. Um, and he said, that's a rational response. So I think that's right. This has simply been extraordinary. So we, we did do this six years ago. We've wanted to do it since then and haven't been able to, to make that happen. Um, thank you, Gigi. Thank you, Julie. Um, the, last, the last time we did this, um, we felt, and lots and lots and lots of people said unprovoked to us, that was really extraordinary. That didn't feel like a conference. And it, it didn't. It felt both much, much loftier and much, much more pragmatic and purposeful than we're used to conferences being. Uh, I like to think that the network is really good at combining those things. Right? We, we, we try to think really big and really seriously and we're not satisfied with any of it until it reaches a point where it matters on the ground for real people. And we, we, we hit that sweet spot the last time. We didn't know if that was a one-off or whether it was gonna happen again. And it has happened again. Um, this one has had that, that very same feeling. Um, and I am delighted and relieved and that all adds up to stunt, which I'm okay with right now. Um, this was an event in the literal sense. It, it had people coming to a place. And my national network staff have done an absolutely astounding job, and I would like us all to thank them. Stand up, everybody. This, this was beautifully done. It went off like clockwork. And I may be I'm trying to get my syntax on this right. Um, more stunned by this than by anything else, which is A, that there is a thing called a step and repeat. And <laughs> second, that I, I had one <laughs> for, for two days. It's just, that's amazing. So good, good work, and thank you. Um, and for most of the rest, I want to go back to actually where I started yesterday. The work that you are all doing is extraordinary. And I'm a little embarrassed by how much I learned from you these, these last two days, because one of the things that that means is that we're not doing our job as well as we should in knowing what you're doing and synthesizing it and, and moving it out, which is one of our central roles. So we're going to be thinking about that. And um, when, I, when I open the floor, any thoughts you might have about how we and collectively all of us could, could do a better job of that would be most welcome because we clearly need to up our game there. But the, the content here, the innovation, the depth of where all this is going is genuinely remarkable. And I have two main responses to that. And one is that if we do what the network is set up to do, and, and capture that and, and connect the dots and do the integration and do the synthesis and get it out into practice, then we will, in fact, do what we wish to do here and what Jeremy has just um, you know, kind of recharged us to do, which is we will, we will change practice, we will change the conversation, we'll change what's going on on the ground, and we will in fact, save lives and save communities. It's there, right? If, you're, if, if you are plugged into this the way we all are and see all those dots and have a sense of how they can be connected, this, this group has the capacity to, to make the change that we want. And that is genuinely inspiring. And the, 
The second is that I just, I wish the larger country and the communities and the agencies and the professions that are, str are so struggling with all this right now, I, I wish they understood how far people had gotten and that you and folks like you are, are working so hard on this all across the country. How much progress has been made, how much insight has been won, and how, how much concrete work we now know how to do, and th the extent to which in, in a very real way, we don't know all the answers, I'm not pretending that, but we know some very real directions, and there is real momentum in those directions. And if people understood that as well as we are now in a position to understand it, people would feel a whole lot better about what's going on right now. And I just wish that they had that exposure. And that's also something that we are and will continue to work on. Um, one, one last thought. Uh, Tim Dunn, who's become a very, very good friend and was here with us from Texas yesterday. I'm not sure he was here today, and I don't think he's here right now, but a, a, a number of you met Tim over the last couple of days. I met Tim at the end of yesterday before the reception right out here, and he, Tim knows a few of us. He does not know our world, and I said to him out of you know, quite genuine curiosity, what do you think? And he said, this has been just wonderful. And we then had a long substantive discussion about lots of different things. But before we got to that, he looked at me and he said, this feels like family. And he's right. The one, of, one of the most wonderful things about this work is that it seems to draw to it really, really, really good people. They, they're good souls, they work hard, they're not egomaniacs, they want things to happen, they support each other. Um, and on a good day, it brings out the very best in really good people. Uh, all of us who do this have a calling. You know, this, we're, we're, we're not getting continuing education credits for doing this, right? That's not why we're here. And, it does feel like family, and it's been wonderful to be with my family for two days. Thank you. So my normal move always at a point like this is thoughts, comments, advice. So thoughts, comments, advice. Two thousand nine. Don't wait so long, Tim. <laughs> 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 well, come. I want to uh, thank you, David. Thank you, Jeremy, and thank you, staff. I know this is an incredible undertaking and very complex. I agree. It's really smooth and easy to do so as a consumer. Uh, and I think you know, some of our city partners up there. This. I tripped across this, as I said, because the commissioner from Patterson invited me here, and I thought, great, I, I'm going to a conference to network with other chiefs. And my question for you then becomes, because I'm telling people where I'm going and what I'm doing, they're looking at me like, what the hell is that? Would, would, would you stop talking now, please? <laughs> So 
I don't know, honestly, because we work very hard at that, and obviously it's not saturating in anything like the way we want. And I was serious when I said that we don't know enough about what you're all doing. We have to think about that very, very, very hard. We spend a lot of energy, again, as, as many of you know here, working on just that. And I, it, it's wonderful to be so amazed by what you're all doing and what's going on out there, but it's also a little, you know, more than a little bit abashed by it. And your, your question is, it's, it's a facet of the same issue. Um, the National Initiative will help because there's a very serious um, public conversation and as, as we said, clearing house and kind of amplification process out of that. Um, we're doing some new things with this event, speaking of amplification, the Amplify people are here who've been doing the, the sort of video interviews with you. We live stream this for the first time. We're getting word back that people are, are catching that. Um, but we clearly need to do better. And again, because of, of the Pritzker Foundation and some other things that have come to us recently, we have, for the first time, the resources to step back and come at that in, in a fresh and, I hope, more effective direction. But also, um, that's the kind of thing we need help with, and less, I think, sort of technical advice than ideas. And we're more than open to all of that. years has been the um, um, uh, maturation of the national network as a as a thing as as a uh, as an entity that has uh, staying power and sort of a, a better financial footing uh, than it's had in a while. It's been it's been um, difficult. I think at times uh, for me and David a little frustrating to get to the point where we now can say what David just said. something just happened and something has now clicked in a very different way and you know the, the number of jurisdictions here whether 30 some plus uh, a number of different uh, and, and ways in which this is not a police chief conference or as you discovered when you walked in the door this is not a uh, DA's conference this is a conference of people of common purpose trying to do some important work and if we can figure out when the next one of these is if it's less than six years which I'm sure it will be uh, there will be in that period of time from now, two years from now, whatever. The, the momentum is, is happening, right? The national initiative is going to help a lot because that's six cities doing important work, connected under the umbrella of the national network. Uh, but I think increasingly, people are going to be looking to us to, especially if not us, means you, to sort of do the work in a different sort of way. And the, the reason I mentioned that in my remarks, the introduction that David so brilliantly did in his opening remarks was to say, now, not just gang violence, drug markets, it's, it's domestic violence, it's uh, prisons, it's burglary. It's, so, so this is a way of thinking about problems that, that plague communities. And the, the extent that people start to say, oh, there's a place where I can go to learn about new thinking that's working, uh, and we are the place, 
and you bring, you know, like Chris said, you bring more people next time. I, I think I think we're at a tipping point actually, and that's well, time will tell. But that's that's very bad. <laughs> right, but, I, but I'm looking at it as, you know, this is the perfect example. I look at the cast that you have assembled for two days, and I, I would love to know that the training was out there to send it the trainers. It is. To train it is. the trainers. I mean, I just that's think that's, that's conversation that we with David. That, that is, that's a, and that has also been um, developed as a, a product line, basically, over the last couple of years. So that is, that's why we're getting so many, so many students here who are actually doing, not just interested, but actually doing the work. <laughs> I, I think you all are the you all are the lightning bolts that are that are coming through. Very cool. Thank you. Oh, you go first and you feel you uh, think you aim for him. Uh, so I'm new to this space. I come from Massacre Jewish Land, um, which the public receives the same sense, but we live in two different realities. So I was just reflecting things. One, this space is full of. And, and not, not so, yes, absolutely. And we don't think that the mass incarceration and public safety conversations are different. Um, and we don't think that you can have public safety with mass incarceration. That's you know, part of that contribution that Jeremy has, has summarized and can, you know, that doesn't capture, right? Sorry, Jeremy. Um, you know, in, the, in the Academy report, Part of our message for a very, very long time has been treating communities like this makes crime worse. Right? We 
We, we know that in all kinds of ways. Um, and we also think that not treating communities in that way keeps people out of lockup, and we're committed to that. And then people like Mark Kleiman are thinking about ways to map these ideas onto getting people out of prison and preserving public safety. So we don't think they're different at all. And if we haven't done enough relationship building here and getting to know people and sharing stuff, then that's something that would be entirely welcome. And we would, we would love to do that. So since you wrote down something I said, I just wanna make sure you understand what I meant. Um, so we have far too many people in prison. And what we know from research is that the public safety value of having all these people in prison is very small. Uh, and that to reduce the number of people in prison requires decisions that have nothing to do with public safety. They have a lot to do with our values and how we decide to punish people for what they've done. We are punitive. We don't need long sentences to get public safety benefits. We don't need somebody at the minimums. We don't need somebody long sentences for drug offenses. That's a separate conversation. But everything I just said is linked to a public safety concern. And what the public safety concern allowed our country to go off in this direction where people promised they could do something about public safety by putting people in prison for 30 years, right? We have to decouple those two things and do something about public safety, not because that is a way to reduce mass incarceration, so it will bring crime down a little bit more, maybe it will help. But mass incarceration is an independent sort of phenomenon that requires a separate strategy. But you can't have that strategy without being concerned about communities that have too much violence, just as a matter of so that's what I mean. I mean. We have to decouple the two, but then put them back together again in the yeah. equation. And just, yeah. just to gild. I get all that, but <laughs> <laughs> just to gild that, Lily. On Thursday, I'm in front of the Illinois Legislature, um, presenting information, rationale, explanation about why you, the the, the legislature wants deterrence. The legislature should want deterrence. The legislature can get deterrence without locking a lot of people up, right? And we're about to lay that out for them. Uh, I just want to say thanks. I'm with the Fort Worth Police Department. We're selected as one of the pilot cities for that, and it's brought me up to a better working knowledge of what's expected of the MRI, so I appreciate that. I would have liked to have had my lieutenant that's been able to come here. He just wasn't able to make it. The one good thing I was saying, this kind of goes along with what you're saying about uh, getting the word out. Uh, I just came back, and I'm not being critical at all, but uh, it was an excellent training, but I just came back from the FBI and A this past year, and I would have loved to have seen some of this in some of their instruction, or as possibly they have a, a, a network of guest lecturers that come in for that. that would, this would be excellent for that also. Mm -hmm. Kind of related to that, though, when, when we were – designated as a pilot city, uh, I, I work in the chief's office, I'm a captain. I posted for a vacancy for a lieutenant's position to be full-time dedicated to the NI. Uh, when I posted it immediately, I had someone put in for it that was at the Southern Police Institute at the University of Louisville, and it was a large component of their instruction there while he was there, and that's why he was so interested. And he was selected for the position, so I'm very excited about him coming over. We'll have a word with the FBI. <laughs> But uh, we'd love to be there too, right? That, that would be great. The evolution here is to, is to have more uh, strands of work that are built over time that show all of us that this work, uh, that things can be done very differently. Um, uh, uh, Tim, 
Don. Uh, as, as our panel uh, in response to a question, somebody said, "What's the most? What are the challenges you're facing? Do, face doing? Uh, what are the challenges you're facing doing work state to state from a right and crime perspective on uh, the populations?" And he said, uh, "The hardest group I have to deal with the prosecutors, right? So we, we you know, we we're working toward having a, a body of work under the national network umbrella that will help us." And those of us who uh, uh, are in that part of law enforcement think about what does it mean to have a different understanding of deterrence and the public safety value of prison sentences if you're a prosecutor asking for those prison sentences, right? And that's, that's got to be part of the conversation. So over time, this is the, the reason for building the big umbrella is to have lots of bodies of work under the umbrella. And uh, it's great to have prisons here. And when you talk about procedural justice and sense of being treated fairly, and you set foot in a German prison after having spent time in an American prison, watching how discipline is meted out differently, you say, whoa, we got a lot of work to do. <coughs> so what, what you folks are doing in, in Washington is really is really at the uh, frontier, and I uh, really applaud you for it. So you, you won't feel so alone next time. Anybody else? Let's go. <laughs> we all do. And? All right. Thank you so very much. And I think if, if nothing else, we can promise it won't be another six years. <laughs>